So good morning everyone, it is Wednesday morning, 10 to seven. Um, just a quick reaction video. Obviously I, I, <laughs> I did a little video uh, on the way to work yesterday evening, roughly 13 hours ago, I suppose. Um, talking about the audacity of the big six and the, the goal that they've had, you know, to try this and the greed involved and why it's frustrating, blah, blah, blah. Didn't really cover all the points about why it would damage the football pyramid in this country, obviously. But anyway, breaking news. Last night, and I'll bring it to you this morning, um, all six Premier League clubs have pulled out. Hala fucking Lulia. Um, some would say, well, fucking right, you know, but I think it's a good, a good thing um, all round, you know. Punishment wise, I doubt anything will happen. To be honest, uh, uh, I I doubt that the Premier League are going to come and are going to are going to come down too hard on these guys. Um, I hope there is some sort of punishment, whether that be a fine. Now, wouldn't that be ironic? You know, if they got fined, like I don't know. It, it, like I said, it's never going to happen. But like, 50, say if they got fined fifty million each, you know, you think you've gone from the potential of having three million just pumped into your club just for turning up and then 50 million down but um, I imagine it'll be something menial you know, I, I think the Premier League will will promise to take a hard stance and they'll end up bottling it they'll come to some agreement over some absolute nonsense but um, anyway the positive thing is they uh, they've all pulled out it looked like Chelsea were the, were the first team to pull out taking the more high ground but um, reports suggest it was actually City were the first team to uh, sign on the dotted line or uh, to, you know, to actually formally withdraw after Chelsea, I've really got to get a new phone hold of the car. Uh, after Chelsea uh, sort of made their intentions clear, City were the first ones to actually action it. But regardless of, of, of who it was, who was first, um, all six are out good um, Ed Woodward the CEO or chief exec of um, Man United has resigned which I'm no Man United fan but I imagine there'll be fans Manchester United fans who will be absolutely delirious with joy happiness and relief to see that motherfucker gone um, who will replace him remains to be seen will it be you know as previously touted Darren Fletcher or someone like that will they be able to coax Edwin van der Sar out of his uh, job at Ajax I doubt it particularly after uh, Ajax weren't invited into the European Super League mental as they are one of the top clubs historically in Europe um, one of the top feeder clubs as well in terms of bringing through you know, proper good talent you just look at the Look at the Dutch players who've come from Ajax in the past. You know, even if you take that team, that 18 19 season team, you know, who uh, got to the semi final, you know, De Ligt, I know he's not um, progressing in Juve as much as I first thought, but De Ligt, De Jong, Donny van der Beek, um, you know, in the past, Schneider, van der Vaart. There's so it just in my lifetime, there's so many. You know, ever, any top player from from um, Holland, ninety nine percent of them, or ninety five percent of them, because you've got some coming through from PSV. Ninety five percent of them have been through Ajax Academy at some point. Um, <laughs> excuse me, leave that in there. No editing here. Um, but anyway, that's enough about Ajax. Just it's good news. It's good news. I I, I was hoping. As a Newcastle fan, a little bit of me was thinking, do you know what? Fuck this six. Let them go. We'll ignore them. The Super League's irrelevant. We'll ignore it. We won't give it any, pay it any mind. And maybe Newcastle can get taken over and maybe we can win the Premier League. Uh -huh. You know, we can be scrapping out with, with the likes of Everton, West Ham, Leeds. Because we've all seen on, on Twitter the last few days, you know, the new big six. You know, it was uh, Newcastle, West Ham, 
Everton, Leeds, Villa, and I can't remember the last one, but and anyway. So that's that done. Um, European Super League died of death in two days. Will it be back? I've no doubt about it. Will there be some changes? I've no doubt about it. Hopefully now we can reinforce positive change um, that's been needed that this, the threat of this bullshit league um, has sort of uncovered, has sort of highlighted and it has given it a bit of a kick up the ass as to why we need to make these changes, you know, to prevent this sort of thing happening, but also to prevent the reasoning for this sort of thing happening. Um, we need, as Gary Neville said rather eloquently over the last couple of days, we need an independent regulator to keep these people in check. You know, you can't just you can't just take your ball and go home. And it was the whole founding. We're we're going to make a league. Therefore, we decide who comes, who goes, who's got enough money. Who's, who's got enough money to have a seat at the table? It, 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 it's, it's horrendous. Um, and then just completely fuck the whole system beneath them and just run off with their, with their fucking pockets bulging with cash. Um, but, yeah, so we need now not to just think... Oof, oof, that was a close one. Nearly, got into, nearly had a European Super League. Oh, we dodged that bullet. No, we can't just sit on our laurels and think, oh, we got away with that. Now is the time. Like Fergie used to do at Man United, reinforce whilst you're strong. So we've survived this cataclysmic error that would have been the uh, the Super League. I hate that, the Super League. Fuck. Anyway, we, we, we've avoided that. Now is the time to keep our foot on the tiger's throat and just push through for more positive change. Push through to stop the I mean no, let's have it right and I know it's perhaps biased but Richard Masters you've been mugged off left right and centre here he did a seemingly very very stringent um, Premier League owners test right on uh, on Bin Salem you know the, the, the Saudi due to take over Newcastle no doubt with the input of the top six, not wanting someone else, you know, another superpower potentially be it being um, reinforced into the league, who from all accounts would sweep all before them financially. I mean, if they come in, it was my hope that we would do things properly, progressively, steady progress um, up the league, not just do a Man City and plough mountains of cash into it, but. Regardless, the top six were obviously terrified of someone else coming in and disrupting them. Um, so Richard Masters has looked after his mates there, uh, looked after the top six owners, and then for them to stab him in the back 12 months later, it's like, fucking hell, pal, come on, wake up and smell the coffee. Um, yeah, so, so obviously the owners' tests are not as... Uh, stringent, strict, or as thorough as they should be, you know, anyone who's got any sort of aspirations of creating a franchise or um, Americanising our, our game shouldn't be let anywhere near the Premier League, anywhere near the Championship, League One, League Two, no, you know, my, my most local team is Truro City, down in here in Cornwall, you know, non-league, an American come in with took them over and wanted to take them to the top to the, the uh, take them into the football league with aspirations of um, franchise I'd say absolutely not ridiculous but um, yeah so obviously these owners test needs to be more thorough there's severe corruption in the game we know that FIFA and UEFA are being painted out as, as the uh, Knights of Shining Armour trying to save our game it's all about the fans. They're corrupt as fuck. We know that. That needs sorting. Sky trying to say, oh, it's all about the fans, all about the fans. Uh, Sky have done very, very well employing um, Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville during this time. 
Gary Neville in particular, you know, these two people who can speak so well about the subject, who are not just people on TV getting all wound up and emotional, you know, obviously they're very, very, very passionate, but they, they actually know what they're talking about, they can remain calm, they speak very well. Um, but yeah, Sky, come on, but we know you're all about the money as well. Um, Sky is arguably part of the problem why we're in this damn mess, you know, starting plowing all the... Oh, boy. Oh. Excuse me. Anyway, but... Scores on the doors, good news. The six teams, the big six, are out. They've bottled it. They've seen the public reaction. Somehow they thought, oh, didn't expect that. And uh, they've called it a day. Withdrawn. PBR'd. VW'd, as they'd say on fucking SA as you don't think. Um, interesting stuff, like I said, because. My final point before I wrap up, because I want to get on the talk sport and hear what they're saying. How they didn't expect that kind of public reaction is beyond me. Like I said to someone last night, and you got, again, Mike Cassidy is a prime example of this. Even if you're in a business, even if you do not care about that business, or you're not passionately involved, you're not a fan, or someone who benefits directly from that business and I'm not talking about finance no you you must understand surely how that business is run right and be able to gauge your audience and know supply and demand what the consumer wants what the consumer expects what the consumer values from your product your business right it, it, I, and I don't like the way I'm talking here because to me football it, I know it is a business but it, with plastic, we're making it plastic here. But anyway, so these owners, you know, particularly the owners of, and everyone's gone on about Man U and Liverpool, and I think that's fair enough because those teams, should know, those clubs should know better. You know, particularly Liverpool, having someone like Jurgen Klopp as the manager, you know, his integrity, his values, his ethos, the values and ethos and and um, principles of these clubs. How they got that so drastically wrong, the football fans. I'm not saying that they expected. The, f the fuck is he doing? Like just filming us. I'm not saying that he expected that. Not him. The, the owners expected the fans to welcome this with open arms. But it's either they've. I would say it's either they don't give a shit or they just didn't know. But they cl it clearly wasn't a case of not giving a shit because they've withdrawn after two days. They've been rattled that much by public response that that they've um, they've withdrawn. But yeah, how you can get that so wrong and and, and miss the mark with your fan base and with fa fan bases and throughout the country is just ignorance beyond belief. Ignorance beyond belief. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up now. I'm going to listen to talk sport. Hear what's going down on there. Yeah, big six. You're staying where the fuck you are. Be interesting to see what happens now. Cheerio.